what is going on guys Carlos here from everything tech and I just thought I give you I was just editing this video and I thought I would give you a uh, a little bit of a background regarding this next video that's coming along which is regarding a cooler you know I've had this uh, cooler this um, Corsair H55 for roughly about a year and a half and um, you know from the beginning uh, I noticed that there was a buzzing noise coming from inside of the of the computer and you know I assumed that it was just the fans that were you know not good uh, the ones that come with with these coolers they they're very loud so I went out and bought some really nice Noctua fans the noise seemed to go away I I really don't know if it was placebo or because you, you get a new thing and you just immediately want it to work so you know I start editing at night and the buzzing sound was just getting worse and worse and worse and you know I've removed all the fans apart from the radiator fan and I noticed that the sound is actually not coming from the fans. It was coming from the pump. The, you got to remember, a pump is only a really tiny fan that has to spin at 1400 RPM in order to move the, the, the coolant around. And uh, that fan is the one that it was causing all these issues. And you know, I went out and spent loads of money on fans for absolutely no reason because there was nothing wrong with the fans that I had. It is literally just a pump. Uh, so, you know, I decided, okay, this time I'm going to go air. I was on air before and, you know, due to one of my friends asking me to go try a, a water cooling, a 4770K is quite a hot processor, especially if you overclock it a little bit. And so I decided to go on um, uh, a water cooler. But, you know, I've decided that I think it's better to go on air because, you know, uh, at least I can control all the fans. The only fan that I, the only fans that I've got are 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter fans. So that means that you know if I if I have them at a really low RPM, the computer is silent. You know I bought another case as well, which is a video that is coming onto the channel, which is the P400S with the temper class. All the sound tests that I've recorded at the end of this video are um, done with my old case which was a cooler master an old cooler master case non-isolated did have a side panel but nothing compared to what the the fantex provides it's a more up-to-date case i think my my case was like seven years old i will show you my build on the the following video uh, of what i did and how it looks with the noctua cooler so um, the temperatures you will see at the end of this video very similar but the noise levels the high pitch that you get from the from the pump it, you don't get that from the air cooler so you know i just thought about putting this in here and to to give you a, a rough uh, idea of what happened the backstory of what happened why i went and bought this cooler so uh without further ado let's watch the video Okay, just looking around the box we can see loads of specifications for this cooler illustrations and noise levels regarding the cooler and the fan as we get inside the box the first thing to come out is a little box of accessories that you're going to need in order to install this cooler in your rig so you get a little bit of thermal paste a special Phillips screwdriver and all the brackets and fan adapters that you're going to need Further into the box we get the cooler itself. There's not much more to this than the, this box of accessories and the cooler itself. So as you get out you can see just how large this cooler is. Uh, we have the, the beige with maroon collar, typical of the Noctua collar scheme. And the fan is in a 120mm and we've got a really large cooler with loads of fins and indentations to get the air to pass through as efficiently as possible. Underneath we've got like a shiny base. There's no copper here. It's all metal. So further into the accessory box, we've get, we get a 1150 or 115551 backplate that goes behind the motherboard. And then we get the brackets that go in the front with the screws and the spaces that you get inside this little baggie here. The 
next thing to come out of the box is the instruction manual for every single socket that this cooler supports. So you've got AMD and you've got LGA 2011, 2066, all those sockets, and you've got the LGA 1150X. Of course, you also get the brackets for the AMD platform and for the other Intel sockets with spaces and a special Phillips screwdriver which is quite long so you can reach the recessed screws of the cooler. You also get a common parts goodie bag that has some stickers and 3M stickers. Another bracket for a secondary fan. You've got a low noise adapter to keep the fans at 1200 RPM which is 4 pin supported. You get a sticker to stick at the front of your case which is made of metal and you get a little tube of thermal paste premium grade thermal paste that you can use also you get some more adapters to prevent vibration on a secondary fan with the cooler standing tall you can see just how large this cooler is and please make sure that you put the side panel once you install this cooler just to make sure that the side panel closes properly because I had some trouble with the case that I had before Yeah, let's install the Noctua cooler on an 1150 system. So you need the 1150X bracket to put at the back of the motherboard. So I'm using a Haswell platform. So I'm using the 1150X or 115X bracket for my CPU platform. And you should install the one that is compatible with the one that you've got. Now let's turn the case around and put the spaces. They're the black kind of like a plastic tubes you have to put them in the protruding screws that are from the back plate and then finally we're going to go and put the brackets and the brackets are oh, they go they've got it written on them this side up and obviously the that side is going to be the side that is going to be up so you need to install the right ones for your system and then we're going to attach them with these little screws here they're kind of like um Phillips screws that you can attach and you need to tie this up pretty good and it doesn't really matter just put a bracket and attach it and then put another bracket and attach it you don't need to do it on a cross sort of uh, way there's no you're not putting any pressure on the on the bracket itself because the bracket is attached at the back so once all of that is done just use the provided Phillips screwdriver to screw everything in properly just don't overdo it but just make sure that it is secure it's not going to fall off after doing this we're going to go and put some thermal paste on the CPU I'm using the one provided by Noctua because this one is a quite a good thermal paste I've also got MX2 but I decided to use this one and see what the temperatures are like and if the temperatures are too high then I will change to my MX2 you know there's many different ways of it, of spreading the thermal paste I prefer this way where I put a line in the center and uh, squash it all into the top of the CPU but uh, you might prefer to just put a blob in the center so now it's time to put the heatsink on the top of the CPU and line up the screws in this part here there's a, a little bit of retention so like if you screw one in the other one you might have difficulty in screwing it so screw it just barely just to be attached and then pressure the cooler down in order to uh, attach the next screw from the other side obviously you need to remove the fan but if you want it's probably better to plug the fan in before you attach the cooler and leave the fan on the side finally it's time to put in your side panel to make sure that it's not touching the top of the cooler because this cooler is really tall it's 158 millimeters so if you haven't got that depth in the case you're not going to be able to fit it mine just barely fits your mileage might vary because of the size of the case I've got a mid case but some cases don't have the necessary depth to get this cooler installed now it's time to attach the fan if you haven't attached it already it's probably best to plug the fan in before you attach the heatsink and then uh, put the fan in afterwards because there's not much space especially in the case that I'm working on but all the newer cases it's much much easier to do this and finally I'm going to leave you with some sound tests from the Corsair H55 and from the Noctua U12S 
I will also provide videos of temperatures on idle and stressed on both coolers. My opinion is that the Noctua wins this race because of noise alone. So thank you very much for watching. If you did like this video, if this video helped you, please give us a like and consider subscribing so I can continue releasing more content like this. Thanks again.